I also think that uh, that there's and, and, and if a letter gets uh, dirty or, 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 or sleazy, I think there's a good chance that it'll, it will end up doing more harm than good for your cause. Uh, I, I, think, I think right now, for example, of uh, poor Mitt Romney and Donald Trump, uh, I mean, you know, he, 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 does, he doesn't want to disown Donald Trump because apparently he thinks that this guy is, wor is worth something in the way of votes. Uh, and yet, at the same time, every time Trump opens his mouth, he is hurting his campaign. Yeah. And he knows he knows that Trump is hurting his campaign. This birther issue that he keeps that he keeps pushing that the you know that, that the president wasn't born in this country and everything that's just you know it's nuts. And Romney knows it's nuts, uh, but he's got this uh, this guy out saying this stuff, and he doesn't know how to deal with it. Uh, if he if he had his brothers, he would certainly get the guy to shut up. And uh, I think that uh, any political candidate would certainly regret seeing a letter that dealt in that kind of stuff uh, on, on his behalf. That's the end of my provocation. <laughs> let's let's talk. <laughs> Who else has Limbaugh? To... You want to talk about Limbaugh? About Limbaugh? Yeah, right. <laughs> and his uh, diatribe against women after uh, uh, Obama came out for uh, requiring Catholic Church to. Uh, you know, I used to, I used to think, I used to think that, that people like him were an embarrassment to conservatives, but I, I, you know, I guess maybe conservatism has changed or something because I hear fewer people uh, object to that kind of thing now. I used to, uh, when, when Doug Wilson was writing a conservative, co a conservative column for the Tribune, he was our in-house conservative for a while, and I would have people tell me, you know, you don't even give us a real conservative columnist, you give us this caricature of a conservative. And uh, those those kind of comments uh, always registered with me because the, the, those are the people we we wanted to please with the conservative call. When liberals would complain about it, I'm like, oh, that's okay. I mean, because that, that that's that's what he's there for is to make is to make liberals complain. But when when Republicans would say, uh, you know, this 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 guy doesn't represent what I say, that would disturb me. But over the years, and then we've replaced him with with Mike Costello, who who uh, kind of has gotten more rabid, I think, over the years. I think he has uh, but I but I would I would still hear it from the liberals, but I would hear I would hear it less from less from conservatives and less from Republicans. I would have a lot of people say, "Thank you for running his column," and I always expected people to say, "You know, you think that guy represents us?" Uh, you know, I would I would like to think that there's still kind of a chamber of commerce, country club conservatism that objects to that kind of stuff, but. Uh, I didn't hear. I didn't hear too much from him. Um, I heard a story this morning on NPR talking about how, over time, I think this was done by the Pew Research Center, mm -hmm. where oh, they were studying 20 years period, you know, for the moderates and the liberals compared to the conservatives, and so over that 20 year period, the moderates and the liberals had stayed pretty much the same, and the Conservatives had gone way over to the right during mm -hmm. that time period, mm -hmm. so that's probably why, you know, why the rush gets yeah. away with all that nonsense all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, you could argue, Betty, that the, the that the that the whole electorate has kind of moved to the right. Uh, well, I in have recent heard years. Too. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us don't. Have. So, why, why is it that the newspaper has a need to have a conservative or? Uh, mainly because, uh, primarily because most newspapers uh, uh, are the only the only paper in the community anymore. Time was when uh, you every, every community had 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 a, a, a Democratic paper, a Republican paper, and some other papers in between, so all the voices were heard. And uh, as newspapers as the newspapers uh, fell by the wayside, most papers. Uh, considered it their responsibility to make space available for other voices, and uh, that's why uh, the Tribune has always had a had a conservative column. Some of you will remember Guy Trotter, who was uh, who was Doug Wilson's oh, predecessor. <laughs> uh, uh, it was kind of a retired military guy, and uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, we we, cons we considered it a, a responsibility to make to to make space for other, and that's of course the reason why the letters column is there too. Is to uh, is to provide uh, other people with the, with the opportunity to uh, be heard. Uh, you know, you don't. I don't think you find that in uh, in Syria. Uh, I don't think you find it in 
in in Russia much. You know, other uh, you know other other voices are being squelched. So we you know just consider it healthy to uh, let other people the people we disagreed with. And that was the that was my, always my standard with somebody like Mike Costello. Uh, the minute I the minute he started writing stuff that I agreed with, I would have fired him because that because that isn't what he was there for. He was there to write stuff that I disagreed with. So. What's the circulation number of the Tribune? It's about twenty-five thousand. Which the people who run newspapers say that means they have about fifty thousand readers because they figure for every every edition that is uh, picked up, it's it's passed on to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So there are two readers of the Tribune in my house, for example. Does anybody consider at the Tribune that there are uh, some of us who absolutely never read Costello? Yeah. I mean, I, I will not read that guy. No way. Or George no. will. Yeah. I try. That's another one. And I get the first paragraph and I go, he, I don't even know what he said. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. I think it's a real disservice to liberals, which I am, to, to have uh, nut job conservatives because they don't articulate, for me, a coherent philosophical point of view. They, they, they are essentially. Uh, exposing their id. That's how I see it. So there are very thoughtful conservatives that I would really like to read to understand why they think that way. And I don't get it from, from you know, I, I don't want to muck around in this guy's misunderstanding of the world. I would like, uh, like Andrew Sullivan, I think, is a very thoughtful yeah, I've conservative. I've always wondered why George Will is so supportive of Americans United. I mean, well, it's, Citizens United. Yes, it, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, because uh, he's an apologist just, for the right way. Well, I know that, <laughs> but, but it seems to me that almost any thinking person would realize the damage that that court he's case. He's an apologist. That's yeah. why he's not interesting <laughs> to read. I know. So, some uh, Andrew Sullivan for me is a thinking man's conservative. Somebody who is conservative from their point it's of because view. Because he's gay. <coughs> well, that could he, be. Yeah, he. That he could got be. The taste of the, you know, being in the. Being on the other side. Fair enough, but I mean, he's still conservative. I mean, he's still. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he is. Well, he is conservative. It, but I think it, it helps you understand why that point of view makes sense to some people. That's George, what I would. Like. George George Will is the most uh, uh, the, the most uh, published columnist in America. Is he, he, he? He appears in more newspapers than any other columnist in the country. And, and I suspect that one reason for that is, is that there are a, a, a fair number of liberal papers who, who, who pick him up because he is a conservative. Yeah. Well, they if, come to the base. Yeah, if he's writing on, for example, if he's writing on education for disabled children, you're right there with him. There are certain things that... Because he has a son with Down syndrome. He has a Down, son with Down syndrome. <laughs> and, and, uh, it, it's interesting to see how uh, his perspective becomes very liberal, very compassionate, when it, he's dealing with something, uh, an issue like that, that he that he cares about very much, and not, uh, I sometimes well, because it's in his home. He's, you know. Yeah. Say, say say what you will about Will, though. At, le at least he had he has some consistency that that, that some others don't have. Yeah. For example, uh, he he opposed the uh, the recall election in Wisconsin. He also opposed the, opposed the recall of Governor Gray Davis in he, California. He did. Uh, so uh, you know, I think that. You know, you might be able to find some inconsistencies in him, but I still, I still think that he is, he's more consistent than a lot of conservatives, and I think he's actually a pretty articulate too. I think he's well, very, very articulate. He's very articulate, and he knows baseball really well. <laughs> so, so maybe to drag us back to the letters a little bit, maybe uh -huh. I could say a couple things on letters to the editor. Um, usually, a campaign or the party, and Mary Jo's in charge of letters to the editor for the late Todd Dems will be trying to time out letters, uh, you know, to schedule letters through the, the political season. So if you're planning to, to do that, it's good to coordinate with the camp. If you're planning on writing a letter, it's good to coordinate with the campaign. Because the campaign would like to get those letters spread out over the, the whole campaign season, not all 20 of them at the end of the day. Um, uh, another thing that's important to remember is the absentee voting starts like September 15th or so, and in Laytock County there was probably 2,500 absentee votes out of 
fifteen thousand last year, so their last election. So write those letters earlier. People won't, you know, your, those votes will be gone. Uh, and two, Jim, Jim set, set kind of a high bar on on writing letters, or at least a bar there. There's a fair number of people who just count letters for certain candidates. So if you can't reach the bar, just just write that letter saying I support. Throw uh, weight. Throw <laughs> weight. Throw some weight in there. I I wonder about throw weight. Uh, I, when, when I see a lot of letters come in for a, for a particular candidate, I think, well, you know, maybe that maybe this shows that there's a fair number of support, a, a fair. Well, a, it, it shows support. support it shows person. organizational ability. Yeah. They they've been able to get the, the campaign organized yeah. enough to do that. Because I used to see I used to see the letters come in delivered by, by one hand, and there would be this a sheaf this thick of them, yeah. <laughs> all with the, all with different signatures on them, of course. <laughs> you know that you know they came from a boiler room someplace. Right. <laughs> and and in, the, in that in that boiler room idea, if you write one, send it to the Tribune, send it to the Daily News, send it to the Argonaut, and this year send it up to the St. Mary's newspaper because our our legislative candidates are in, in two media markets this time. Mm -hmm. Well, in the spokesman review, as far as that goes, because it because it circulates in and the Bet Cor Benoit County and the Cor and the Cor 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 too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, do you have to send in like a contact email or something so you can verify that we're really people? De depend depends on the paper. Uh, de depends on the newspaper. Uh, we 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 never required that at the Tribune. For one, for one reason, because I didn't have the time to, to, to go calling and, and looking after that. For another, for another reason, uh, uh, Lewiston is kind of a lunch bucket town where a lot of people are doing shift work. And uh, if you if you were trying to get a hold of somebody in the evening hour, you might be trying to get a hold of somebody who's working a swing shift, and it just wouldn't work. So we did, we never did that. And uh, every now and then we would discover a hoax, but it was actually uh, remarkably rare. Uh, most of the letters that we got were pretty authentic. Every now and then, I'd get one that that you know look had the look of uh, of, a, of a fake, and I would send a send a letter saying I'm wondering about the authenticity of this letter. I'll hold it at my desk. Please call. And if I didn't get the call, then I would then I would trash the letter. So we have to send an address. Or? Uh, yeah, we always required a, a street address. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to, to give as much as you can. If you, uh, if you want to put a phone number down, that's fine. But, but all that doesn't get published, so people no, drive by no, and throw things. No, out. no, no, okay. no. And uh, and I don't know of any paper around here that would publish a letter without a name. We insisted on we insisted on publishing names, but uh, and then the hometown, but not street addresses. Okay. You know, one of the things that. But I believe, I don't know, it's just my own personal view. When I look at letters to the editor, the first thing I look at is who wrote it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because a lot of people have a lot more validity to me than other people. Exactly. And so uh, I, I guess um, I, I think it's important for, for people to write letters because um, even, though, even though you write a lot of them, um, people either, either judge you positively or negatively based on the way they yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do the same thing, you know. I, I mean, we all remember D.B. Hughes, or some of us oh remember D.B. <laughs> D. D. Hughes from uh, Elk River who wrote some of the wilder letters that appeared in the in the Daily News. And, uh, you know, you, you would look at that name and you'd know generally what, what was happening. But then there are there were other other names that I would look for in, in the letters column. And when I saw that name, I would read that letter uh, regardless. I mean, you know, uh, Don Madison, for example, I don't know if you, if you, if you know him, the, 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 the chemist, the chemist from uh, from Wazoo, who used to live out here at uh, Joel. He always wrote very good letters to the editor. Absolutely. He, he's moved to uh, to Pullman now, but uh, 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 Terry Day uh, in Pullman uh, writes writes very good letters. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and then there's Larry Kasper. <laughs> Larry's not Larry's not as uh, as as. Uh, uh, <laughs> as big a writer as he used to be, but yeah, he, he was he was one of those that was way out there. He took a break for a while, but he's back in business. Uh, okay. Flora Teachman. Flora, yeah, she's okay. actually actually for Flora. Flora and I go way back. She started writing letters under the name Eros Hunt, E R O S H U N T, and then uh, somebody from up in the her area up in Kamei uh, told me that, uh, that that was a fake name. So I sent a so I sent a letter to uh, to her address and said I've been told that this is that this is not a uh, 
not your name. Uh, for that reason, unless I hear from you, I won't publish any more letters under that name. She called me and she said that was my father's name. I was using that because I was afraid of recriminations. And I said, well, I'm sorry, Flora, but you know, if you want any more letters printed, we'll have to do it under your name. And by God, she was happy to do that. So. <laughs> She, she uses her real name now. She was using she was using her father's name at one time when she first started writing. And you know, I, I mean, the smaller the community, I can I can kind of understand it because uh, even you know, in in Moscow, uh, in a town like Moscow, even though it's not a big town, everybody doesn't know everybody. You know, some of the names we see in the paper are, are people we don't know. But in a in a place like Kamii or Kuski or something like that, it's probably it's pretty hard to be anonymous. I, I, I actually kind of liked living in Moscow uh, rather than Lewiston because I had I was a little less well known up here and I could go to the grocery store without having quite so many people grumble at me as uh, if I did it in Lewiston. <laughs> you live up here now? Yeah, I I have for thirty years. Yeah, great. <laughs> I commuted. <laughs> Well, we still have Harvey Kahn, we still have Kennegan. Well, Harvey, Harvey Kahn is pretty, is pretty uh, harmless, though. He just, he just writes religious screens. Yeah. <laughs> he, he doesn't really attack anybody other than, than gays in, in general. Yeah, yeah. No, he's just, you know. That's pretty severe, I would say. Well, but uh, as opposed to somebody who comes after individuals, though, by name. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, he doesn't do that, and, and, and he does it in a way that says, you know, you, you can be saved, uh, you know, yeah. he, come, he, to, he, come, to, come to the Lord and that kind of thing. Yeah. But it's not mean or vicious. Tom uh, Hennigan, though, is, is vicious. He used to go after me quite a lot. Yeah, but he didn't talking. like you. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wondered how his mother could stand him. <laughs> She's not like him at all. Yes. <laughs> His mother is a liberal Jew, and he's a conservative Christian. So. <laughs> One of the things that candidates like this free press, like having their events covered and, and not having to pay to have an ad, do you have any suggestions for how to generate lots of free press? Or do's and don'ts about that? I know you're an editorial writer, and that would bother you a lot. You know, when I, when I was a political reporter, uh, I used to have to deal with that. I remember when Jim Jones, for example, who's now on the uh, Supreme Court, uh, when he was first running for Attorney General, that guy came through Lewiston so often, I just couldn't believe it, and every time he came through Lewiston, he came in to see me. And every time he came in, you know, I'd go down, we'd sit down and have a cup of coffee, and finally, eventually I'd have to say, you know, Jim, stopping by here isn't going to get you a story every time. <laughs> and and then I proved it by not by not writing a story every time, and I started seeing a little less of it. But uh, you know, it, it doesn't hurt. Uh, you know, uh, the, the the more the more you try, uh, uh, probably the better you're going to do. So I'm surprised actually the uh, uh, candidates. Uh, by the time I left the, the the business, we were getting fewer candidates in rather than more. People, people stopping in to, uh, to try to make news. And uh, one of the sad things I, I see now in, uh, in at least my newspaper uh, especially, is they think covering an election campaign is having one story before the election about a particular race, and they'd say, this is what so-and-so says, this is what so-and-so says. Yeah. So, to me, that is not covering campaigns. Mm -hmm. you know, that's that's pre presenting, presenting candidates. But covering a campaign means covering the news things that happen during a campaign. And the Daily News, to its credit, I think during, before the camp, before the uh, primary, actually did some did some stories covering the campaign. Uh, you know, they they went to a, a, a gathering, a, kind of a tea party gathering, where uh, uh, Gresham Bauma, Bauma, how does he pronounce his name? Bauma or Gresham, Gresham Bauma and and uh, this fellow Degrees uh, uh, and Cindy Agidius appeared. And uh, then, and then they, they noted which Republican candidates had not appeared there, uh, at the Trail and uh, and Schroeder, for example. And you know that's the kind of thing that's covering campaigns as opposed to just just you know presenting pictures of candidates and saying this is what this is what they have to say. And and that's probably brushed for our lights. In, inventing that event, which they did, 
and probably push, pushing the, the daily news on just that issue on what candidates showed up. Mm -hmm. So that, 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 that might be candidates really creating the news there. Yeah, yeah. created a news story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, reporter, reporters are always interested in, in something unusual or something that might be controversial. You know, when people would come up and shake their fingers in my face and say, you know, you're only doing that to sell newspapers, I'd always say, you're goddamn right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the nature of the business. Is it possible that the Tribune could get rid of some of those upfront columns to have more news? I mean, you know, every week, Kathy Hedberg, you know, I read her most all the time. But it's such drivel, you know, there's no redeeming quality. Do you read it, but it's drivel? It? <laughs> yeah, it and, uh, you know, every year, uh, Alfred, Butch Alfred, is going to have his column on the most popular baby names, names yeah. every year. Who cares? I mean, if I, I, had, if I had a I baby, mean, I'd want to know what his name was. But I, I mean, it's only once a year, Betty. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, they could dump a whole lot of that garbage out of the Tribune I'm talking about now and put stuff in there that well, we could read. You, you know, there, there, are, there are two kinds of letters to the editor. You can send a letter to the editor, such as we're talking about here, that's going to be published, or you can just send a private message to the editor saying, you know, that saying, yeah, this, that this is, yeah, this and is all that entertainment on the back. I don't even know who these people are, you know, they're writing about. That's because we're old. All the showbiz personalities. Yeah. And stuff. Well, I'll tell you, that's going to be harder to get rid of because, unfortunately, newspaper, new, news, newspapers do know what people want to see. And they are always balanced, trying, to, trying to balance between what people should see and what they want to see. And they do market studies. They know what people want to see. And you've been in the same supermarket lines I have, where people are picking up those tabloids, you know, just before they, just before they hit the register. Uh, people want to see that stuff. That stuff really sells. Why do you think they have all that, all those tabloid shows on uh, television too? That junk really sells. The national news too has so much. Like they'll have whole segments. Take the, the last <laughs> seven or eight minutes of of of, yeah. of, of, uh, of any NBC, ABC, CBS. I mean, they only have you know twenty some minutes of news, and then the yeah, last several minutes. are the, the last are just junk. Eighteen maybe minutes, Not even but it's but, but, they got 10 minutes but the last the last few minutes is, is is invariably some real soft stuff, and I'm sorry, but that sells. Why, why so many comic strips? That sells too. Why so many bad comic strips? <laughs> <laughs> we all have our opinions about that, don't we? <laughs> yeah. I know the good ones. <laughs> the only good one is Zips. Yeah. Oh, I, I, <laughs> oh, I thought I could figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, yeah. see we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna differ on that, even though we might, we might be in tune on a lot of other things. <laughs> Well, I don't mind that you have Doonesbury on the editorial page because then I get to read it. You know. You know, one of the best one of the best letters I remember speaking of Doonesbury came from the late Jack Winders. Oh my God, uh, we have to talk about who, him tonight. Who uh, who wrote it? He wrote a very clever letter <laughs> that say that said uh, uh, people accuse the uh, Tribune of having a liberal bias. If that were true, why would they hide Doonesbury on the opinion page, which no one reads? And, uh, and, and, and publish Mallard Fillmore in the back of the classifieds that everybody looks at. <laughs> and that was a very clever letter. <laughs> does Martin have the job that you used to have? Yes, yes he does. I mean he does a good job. I mean he picks up stuff. I'm like, where did you find this I think, out? I think, he's, I think he's great. I tried to hire him uh, when Bill Hall retired. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, was, he was the editorial page editor in Idaho Falls mm -hmm. at the time. But unfortunately, he was involved in a family dispute at, in Idaho Falls at the time. That was his hometown, mm -hmm. and he couldn't leave. And uh, then when when t time came for me to retire, I had kind of given up on him. And uh, when we published the the uh, the opening, I got a call from him, and he said, "You're going to have all kinds of good applicants, but I'd like to throw my hat in the ring." So mm, that's said, great because I, so I, I said, "Gee, I'm glad to hear that, Marty." <laughs> yeah. So another guy that came for about a year, I forgot what his name was, he was good too, you know, he worked with you. Tom Henderson? Yeah. He was a very colorful writer. Yeah, mm -hmm. I liked him. Yeah, unfortunately he was, the, he was the one who was the victim of the cutback yeah. mm -hmm. when, they, when we went from two editorial writers to one. I kept his John Wayne column on the side of the refrigerator for ever so long, you know. <laughs>
Well, you just wonder why people vote for the people in Boise if they read these editorials that Marty writes. And so my pathologist, I work at, at the hospital, and he said, because not everybody writes about this. The Boise people doesn't. You know, up north they don't. So this is the only people that know. Well, the, the, the Leyton and, and Nez Perce counties have, have, long, have long been more swing counties, too, where I think people uh, people people are more independent uh, in their voting. Uh, uh, I think a lot of other places in Idaho, uh, people people vote pretty much a, a party line. And uh, I, I remember when when I, I started the newspaper business in the Silver Valley in Shoshone County, where the Democratic primary was the only election that anybody paid any attention to, because one, if you were the Democratic nominee, you were elected. Uh, this, the, the same thing was true in Lewiston. Uh, at one time. Those were good boys. Uh, but <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> like back back in back in Chicago where you used to be able to just pull one lever, you know, for the for, vote for the whole the whole party ticket. But uh, uh, those areas have become a little more independent now. Unfortunately, you know, I, I'm, I'm waiting to see some of those uh, rock ribbed uh, uh, right wing places become a little more independent, like Canyon County, uh, you know, Bonneville County. Now, there's a there's a kind of a hotbed of liberalism down in Teton County now. Yeah. But uh, what, what, what is what is your take on why Idaho has moved into the Republican column in such a big way? I think the I think the Republicans did a very good job of exploiting the natural resource issues and uh, uh, going to working people and saying these are the people who are putting you out of work. And I think, and I, stuff, and, right? yeah, and I, and I think, I think that succeeded very well, and uh, the Democrats are having a hard time pulling themselves back out of that. What would they have to say to Reagan Democrats about that issue to uh, get them back in the fold? Boy, if I knew that, maybe I'd run for office, <laughs> which I won't do because I have I'm, a paper trail. I'm trying to help write the Democratic platform <laughs> yeah. on that very issue, and I'm raising that issue. The Idaho Democrats need to make a major concession on the environment vis a vis the national policy of these natural resources. Yeah, a major but concession? A, a major concession, that's right. We Why? need to distance ourselves from the nation, national policy on it. But I don't know what specifically that needs to be. Because people, I, I would argue historically that some of the most effective liberals nationally have made the biggest concessions in their. Um, Policies like uh, Fulbright never voted for. I don't think he ever voted for civil rights. No, he didn't. And yet he was one so, of the most so effective wait a minute, liberals. So why? Uh, this, this still now doesn't answer my question. Why would the Idaho liberals? I mean, concession to <laughs> to conservative Democrats to get them to vote for Democrats. And and so and so the result is <laughs> so result is that we're not going to have any trees because but we got the votes. Well, I don't. I don't. This is the problem. I don't know what the concession needs to be. I should be Keystone XL. I don't. I don't know what it is. Responsible management, you know, which yeah. doesn't so. so we much we need to say something in a way that says to them, we get that natural resources are your livelihood, mm -hmm. and we're not going to take it away from you. And if that means we have to break with the national, we will. That's that's the message, in my view. C. C. Sanders, C. Sanders found a, found a pretty good balance there. And uh, he, you know he was he was he was able to uh, to do well with the, with the Idaho electorate when, when other Democrats weren't because because he, he I think he demonstrated that he was he was trying to find a balance. There. And don't you think his his background? I mean, he was a logger. He'd been a logger. Yeah, he'd been a logger. I mean, mm -hmm. one would just automatically assume that he would have an understanding of of uh, logging families' needs, and, mm -hmm. and, and and he did. I mean, he was. Uh, Remarkably, um, but that's that's when you, there were trees. You know, there are no <laughs> trees. I mean, you go out, if you go where I live outside of Deering, there are no trees. Mm -hmm. It's all gone. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, my brother lost so a lot. So, what are we going to be making concession to? What? Well, that's the problem. So, that so there are that. votes for what? Well, that, but well, so you get so you get Republicans who cut poor trees. Because you're holding fast and not wanting to cut any. 
I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the sad irony, that, that to try to do something ends up in doing nothing. Actually, I think, I th I think, I think those, those arguments are pretty, are pretty more abundant now anyway. I think that uh, uh, those, those, the, the, the time that those really decided races uh, is probably past. I think that it's just kind of a holdover from that that, 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 has, that has put Republicans in the driver's seat. I think it's going to, it's going to take, something, something else is going to come along. Uh, maybe, it's the, maybe it's the zaniness of the right. Uh, I don't know that's, that's, that's going to, uh, going to change, change the electorate again. But uh, I, think those nat I think those natural resource battles have kind of, have kind of been fought. And uh, I, don't know, I don't know that they're that, they're that uh, vital these days. How do, you, how do you explain the uh, Tea Party movement in Popeyes? I mean, they're on the ascendancy. They're not on the wing. But, uh, but is it natural resource issues, or is it, is it stuff like you know, calling uh, Obama a socialist and, and things like that? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see, the, see the, uh, the, the, logging, the logging wars being fought nearly as much as they used to be. Of course, we went from a time when, when, we, were, when we were cutting something like, what, 20 billion board feet a year, and we went down to two. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know. I think it's a lack of studying of the issues. I think people take the, the snatch from the National Enquirer, and that's what they vote. Exactly, because people are not educated. It's about education. Well, well that's it's time. People are not educated, and they do not really understand that by being educated, maybe you can sort of improve your you know, trailer lifestyle. I think a lot of it really is more, it, it, it's, it's more emotion. Uh, it's, it's what, it's what, uh, it's what was good for my folks and, and what this town used to be and we've lost that and it's the Democrats' fault. You know, I, it, it does, I don't think, I, I'm not sure how much education helps when, when you have, what you think has no substance. Well. The, 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 the job of being a citizen is not intended to be an easy job. Uh, you know, c citizens have responsibilities that too few of them undertake, I think. And uh, that's being, exactly. being, being, being informed about elections is, is one of those responsibilities. And uh, I don't think people are, uh, people are living up to it. And I think in many, in many ways, the, uh, the, the press is not doing as good a job as it should in, uh, in keeping them informed. But, from, but is that fair with the Tea Party? I mean, they feel like they're experts in the Constitution. They see themselves as constitutional scholars. They're not indifferent to it. I mean, they feel they're fundamentalists to it. Mm -hmm. Well, these, yeah, these are, these are the, the very active people, though. But, the, the people, but they're not the people who decide elections. The people who the people who decide the candidates, right? and this is Idaho. Well, <laughs> the yeah. Republicans win. Yeah. Well, you, we, we we don't know yet how the how the uh, how the closed primary is go, is going to uh, is going to play out uh, in the long run. Uh, you know, there cer there's certainly a, a great uh, battle within the Republican Party about it. Oh yeah. And uh, you know whether whether it's going to uh, turn off uh, voters or not, I just don't know. I remember uh, when the uh, when Washington, which had the open blanket primary, I grew up I grew up with the open blanket yeah. primary, or in a or in a primary election, you could jump from Anybody. party from party to party in, in races. You know, you, in in one race you could vote on the Democratic side, and another race you could vote on the Republican side. And I remember the first time people in in uh, Clarkston were handed a ballot where they had to choose between the Republican and the Democratic ballot. They were angry. You know, they didn't they didn't want to see that. So you know, may, may, there might be there might be some backlash over this closed primary. I think it's probably too early to tell. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised there's been less angry people after the primary because I, I expected to hear more complaints. Than well, I have. and if you looked at the numbers, a third of the people took the third or forty percent of the people took the nonpartisan ballot, which had no races. No races. On no races at all. Yeah. Right. And you know, a lot of I know when the poll workers were, I was talking to some poor because they were. Um, uh, they were concerned that people would take that nonpartisan ballot not knowing, and then uh, would be real upset. But it really, I think the way, at least the way they did it here, where the ballot was on display before you ever had to make a commitment, if you took a nonpartisan ballot, you knew that that's all you were going to vote for. So it, 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 it seems, it's rather an enigma to me that, that that many people were willing to give away their, their a significant yeah. vote. 
Well, they probably learned something, too. I mean, you know, they, 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 they learned there wasn't any point in me coming here if that's, if that's all I'm going to be able to do. And, and, and some of them left. Uh, who was who? Yeah, there's people that got mad. Yeah. 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 Jim, uh, this question is not particularly uh, political, but some of the more interesting letters that I've read through the years have been on non-political matters, things that, though maybe the writer really felt strongly about. I'm getting ready to write a letter. Um, nothing politics. There's a piece of property in town that I consider an eyesore. And everybody's talking about this people piece of property and it's an eyesore, but nobody does anything about it or nobody says it. Not a complaint to the mayor. So, so <laughs> I'm, 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 I've got to write a letter and, and tell me that's question not political. Is, though. My question is: Is there a particular style of letter that you feel? Let's eliminate politics. A style of letter that you think is more effective. And I come back to something Nancy and I. Uh, laugh about all the time. The movie's Casablanca, and the police inspector comes in there and says, I am shocked. I'm absolutely shocked to hear that there is gambling going on. <laughs> is there a style of writing that you have seen that you thought was most you ever shocked anymore? <laughs> well, if, 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 I, if I told you a formula, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Because, I mean, good, 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 any good writing is something that is that is not formulaic, so I can't so I can't no I can't I can't give you a good answer for that, but I think I think there's no, there's nothing the matter with a letter of, of saying such a thing, that's uh, and I think it would probably get a lot of attention. Inverted pyramid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's no formula. I have a question about how we can generate more publicity for a candidate that we don't know very well. I'm thinking of the guy that's running against Labrador, for example. Um, you know, I don't know this guy. I've never met him. I don't know anything at all about his philosophy or anything other than he's a Democrat. Well, uh, now he is, anyway. Uh, <laughs> so how do you how do you communicate about a person like that if you well, don't know anything about them? Well, first thing is find out. And then, uh, at least most of these people have websites now. And that, that that's... Uh, can be very helpful. You know, most most uh, candidates' websites now have a have a little thing you can click on that says issues, and uh, some of them even have something to say in the, uh, under that. Uh, and some of them just wallow around in a lot of words and don't really. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I yeah that's they, true. But that tells that tells you something but that's, too. What's his name? Jimmy Ferris. Jimmy Ferris. Jimmy Ferris. There's a website. Football player. Oh, smart. That tells a lot of things about candidates. The folks that smart. Smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, not as many candidates uh, uh, fill out the vote smart uh, questionnaire as should. But they, yeah, that does tell you a lot. Yeah. So is that the ARP vote smart? No, it's no, it's an independent project. Okay. Uh, yeah, it uh, uh, comes from a number of different uh, mm -hmm. number of different uh, organizations got together and pushed it. So Jim, recognizing that a lot of people take multiple newspapers in this area. Um, is there a rationale for modifying your letter slightly when it will appear in multiple publications that are read by some of the same audience members? Can you magnify your effect if you have that much to say, or should you gear it toward a particular reader? You know, is, is there a different reader of I don't know, the Argonaut from the... Uh, you know, if, 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 if you have the time, if you have the time, I, I, guess, I guess that would probably be worthwhile. I don't know how many people have the time to do that. But, uh, if, you have, if you have the time, write two letters two weeks apart. Yeah. Yeah. In a different yeah, style and send it to all the papers. Right. Yeah, that would that would that would probably be probably be a good idea. You know, I think that I think that there used to be more. I know that there were more common subscribers between the Daily News and the Lewiston Trib. When one was a morning paper and one was an evening paper, mm -hmm. when, 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 they, when they both went morning, yeah. a lot of a lot of people dropped one or the other, mm -hmm. and uh, that that that, cre that created a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, the, Why did they change? Why did they change? Uh, for production reasons, uh, they're both printed in the same plant, and now now you don't have to have a second shift to print oh, the other okay. paper. It's all economics. It's, that's the old, that's which is still the reason why there are the two newspapers. I used to argue for a for uh, uh, doing in the daily news and, and producing a bigger, better paper to uh, go up against the spokesman review. 
that was back when the spokesman review was more vital here than it is now too though and uh, I re soon realized although nobody spelled it out to me that as long as you can get two Macy's ads uh, you're going to have two papers <laughs> but it sure wasn't it you know I, we never we never did uh, we still take both papers in the morning so we read them both and um, it's it's so redundant mm -hmm. but we do it yeah yeah and you see the same wire service copy and it's uh yeah i'm not crazy about it either but no, then you only get the edge though the worst <laughs> yeah, yeah and and i like the edge by the yeah. way <laughs> They never let me near any, any of those business decisions, believe me. They kept, they kept me as far away from those as they did from the advertising department. <laughs> it, this is off point completely, David. I have uh, this little thing from the Idaho Education Association. I need five signatures to people who are willing to say that they support the repeal of the Lunar Laws. <laughs> You can probably find those signatures. I bet I can find them here. <laughs> I can get this damn thing off the floor. But they just handed up the Latin top. Yes. Anything more on anything more on letters uh, before we hang it up? And... Well, thank you for coming. I appreciate oh, it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get.